All right, thanks for watching. And today's goal is to find the general solution of the wave equation, which is UTT equals to C squared UXX. And what this represents, it represents the height of a wave at position X and time T. So if I fix time equals T, and I focus on position X, then U of XT gives us the height of this wave. And the cool thing is, we will actually solve this equation by solving two first order PDEs. This is why first order PDEs are like the mother of PDEs. They are like the building blocks in some sense. And it's all based on this very silly observation that t squared minus c squared x squared can be written as t minus cx times t plus cx. And what we want to do, we want to do this but with those differential operators. Because notice you can rewrite this equation as utt minus c squared uxx equals zero. And this is the same thing as delta over, or I guess del over del, t, del squared over del t squared minus c squared del squared over del x squared of u equals zero. Again, where this weird thing just means differentiate twice with respect to t, and this weird thing means differentiate with twice with respect to x. And what I'm claiming is this is the same thing as saying, for instance, del over del t minus del over del x times del over del t plus c del over del x, u equals zero. Oh my god, I just realized it makes me think of Adele. Then, Two weeks too late or something. Anyway, so at least YouTube knows. Um, and again, if you're not convinced, let me quickly try to show this to you. Because what is del over del t plus c del over del x? That's just ut plus c ux. And this is just saying, take this junk, differentiate this with respect to t, and do minus c differentiate this with respect to x. And then what you get is utt plus c uxt minus c utx minus c squared uxx. Lo and behold, the cross terms cancel out and we get utt minus c squared uxx equals zero. All right, what's the advantage of this? The advantage of this is Instead of having this second order thing that involves two derivatives, you actually just write this as a product of first derivative kind of things. In other words, let this gibberish here, del over del t plus c del over del x u, let's call this v. Then what does the equation become? it becomes vt minus cvx equals zero. So first of all, what we get is vt minus cvx equals zero. But that's a great thing, because you see, this is a first order PDE, which we can actually solve, at least based on the previous videos. And I would like to remind you that the solution of aux plus buy equals zero is just, if you want, either f of i lamau or f of a y minus b x, or you can also write as f of b x minus a y. That's okay for different f, namely f of minus that becomes f of b x minus a y, and what this tells us then in fact is I think v x t just becomes any function of, if you want, either like minus ct minus x, or you can write this as uh, x plus ct. Maybe I switched the variables or something, but 
Uh, you can check that this is true because if you differentiate this with respect to uh, t, you get a cf prime and then minus cf prime becomes zero. So the solu general solution of this is this, where f is arbitrary. However, we're not done because we solve for v. All we need to do is simply solve for u and well, to solve for u, you just need the definition of v, which is this thing. So now let's use v. v is simply del over del t plus c del over del x, u, which is ut plus c u x. So what we get is ut plus c u x is v, but remember now v, we know what v is. It's f of x plus c t. So all we need to do is now to solve this first order inhomogeneous PDE. Because if this were zero, then we would solve this, but it's just we have this extra term which isn't a big problem, I'll tell you in a second. Because again, as I said, we know how to solve ut plus cux equals zero. So let's first do that. So the solution of ut plus cux equals zero, maybe let me emphasize this, so the homogeneous equation, well, Again, by the stuff I actually just erased, you actually get uxt equals either little g, or you'll see why I write this, capital G of x minus ct. So again, it's a first order PDE, which like a equals one, and b equals c, and then you get, I guess, uh, ay minus, uh, uh, bx or something. Well, anyway, you, you do get this, and again, it makes sense, because if you differentiate with respect to t, you get a minus c here, which cancels out with this c here. That's why I know I'm correct. And here's the thing. So you solve the homogeneous problem, and here's the beautiful thing about homogeneous PDE, I guess homogeneous linear PDE. Once you solve the homogeneous solution, to actually solve the whole thing, you just need to find one solution. And I would actually like to remind you of this fact, which was actually studied in linear algebra. If you want to solve ax equals b, then the general solution of this is just x equals x0 plus xp, where x0 is the general solution of ax0 equals 0, and xp is a particular solution of axp equals b. And in fact, the cool thing is, PDE is it's like an infinite version of linear algebra. So the same theorem is true for PDEs. If you want to solve a linear PDE of the form something equals f, first find a solution of that something equals zero, and then just find one solution of this equation. So all that's left to find is one solution of this PDE. And this one, I mean, of course you can use kind of the same method as before, or again, because we just need to guess, let's guess something. This is kind of saying the derivative of u equals f, so let's just guess u be capital F, the antiderivative. So for the particular solution, guess u of xt equals capital F of x plus ct. This almost works, except it turns out you just need to add a certain, con like to multiply it by a certain constant, because if you try it out directly, you might be stuck. But let's just give us some leeway. Guess u equals to a times this, where a we want to find it. 
WTF125 and capital F is the antiderivative of F, little f. And then let's plug this ansatz or this gas into the PDE. So UT plus CUX, we want this to be little f of x plus CT. So A capital F plus x plus CT with respect to T plus C A capital F x plus CT with respect to x is f of x plus CT. Differentiate this. And let's see what we get. And I'm very compact today. I don't want to use too many whiteboards. So then differentiate this and you get A, okay, using the Chen loop, uh, A capital F prime, which is little f, x plus ct, times the derivative of this with respect to t, which is c, plus ca, again, derivative of capital F, which is little f, x plus ct, and derivative of this with respect to x is 1, and we want this to be little f of x plus ct. So now, notice, uh, we actually have we can solve for this, so we have AC, little f of x plus ct, plus AC, little f of x plus ct, equals little f of x plus ct. Notice the f of x plus ct, they cancel out, and you get 2AC equals 1, so A equals 1 over 2C. In other words, if you let A to be 1 over 2C, it actually solves your equation. So our particular solution will, will then be U of XT, it's 1 over 2C, capital F of X plus CT. And then all you have to do is just add those together. So that was the homogeneous solution. That was the particular solution and then add them, and you get u of xt equals g of x minus ct plus 1 over 2c capital F of x plus ct. Except, remember, I know this constant was important in terms of the antiderivative, of little f, but remember now little f was arbitrary. So here's the cool thing. Now going back to your original equation, utt equals c squared uxx, well, now because capital F is an arbitrary function, one over two c capital F is still an arbitrary function. And in particular, what is the general solution? Well, it's simply any function of x plus ct plus any function of x minus ct. And in fact, if you want, you can check this. So, because if you calculate utt minus c squared uxx, what you get if you differentiate this twice with respect to t, you get basically capital F prime prime times c squared x plus ct. And then, well, again, capital G double prime, but here we have minus c times minus c, which just becomes plus c squared x minus ct. And then minus c squared, you differentiate this twice with respect to x, x plus ct. And minus, you differentiate this twice with respect to x. And all this cancels out. And this is zero. How beautiful is that? So again, just to recap, we started with this second order PDE. We factored this out as two first order PDEs. 
we solve them successively and then we find you know, the general solution of this. And next time I'll find a solution but with initial conditions which leads us to D'Alembert's formula. All right, if you wanna see more math and more PDEs, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.